By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Zombie Cup in Zandam. This is our last episode. It is the finals. And I'm just so excited to show you this match because guess what? I am in it. I've made it to the finals. Now do remember though, this is a small tournament. We started with eight wizards. Now only two of them remain. One of them is me. So I'm playing against uh, Yella and Yella is playing a mono black deck. There's a lot of land destruction in this deck and Paralyzes. I found out through this tournament that Paralyze is such a good card. Now I am playing with my mono red goblins deck that got completely <laughs> annihilated in last week's episode. But despite that loss, I still made it into the finals. So I'm very excited to play here again against the Yella and see if I make a chance. Now before I start with the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to go straight to the games, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, so click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that description, you can also find more information about the rule set. So we are playing according to the Swedish rule set with an open reprint policy. Basically, that means that you can play with revised 4th edition Chronicles as long as it has the same art. Um, and also that we're not playing with Fallen Empire, so you're not going to find any him to Turex or Goblin Grenades in this match. And despite that, we still both made it to the finals, so we didn't even need those cards. Yeah! Go Goblins and Mono Black! Um, Oh, and there's one more thing in that same description below. You can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, and that is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron and supporting the show financially. Please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And uh, thank you for considering that. And then we are going to continue here with the deck decks. I'm going to start with uh, my deck, Goblin Bowl. Let's have a look. And here you see my deck, Goblin Bowl. Now this deck is named after the goblins in here. It's really Goblin Tribal and the Ball Lightnings. I'm also playing with Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt. I kind of love how that sounds, like Ball Lightning, Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt. It makes sense, doesn't it? And the story of this deck is that the goblins are out for an ultimate party night. There is a Blood Moon, a card again that's also in this deck. There's Thunder, you know, the Ball Lightnings are out. It's just chaos, chaos, chaos. And that means... The goblins are here to party, and that's exactly what this deck wants to do. A cool thing to note here is I've got a lovely uh, altar in this deck made by Buddy, um, and you can find him on Instagram via Viking Altars, and he's made this lovely David Bowie altar. Of course, David Bowie is the goblin king in the movie The Labyrinth, and uh, yeah, that's what the inspired this altar, and I thought it was so cool to have it in this deck, you know, this whole idea of having an epic goblin party, and my opponent is basically an uninvited guest at the party. So I'm going to kick him out as fast as I can. And I'm going to do that goblin style, right? I've got so many one drops in this deck, right? I've got a play set of goblins with the Flark, a 1-1 one, one creature from the dark, a goblin with mountain walk. I've got three goblin balloon brigades, also one red to cast, a 1-1. One, one, and for one red, you can give it flying. I have, of course, four chain lightnings, four lightning bolts, all with the casting cost of just one. I'm also playing with four black vices. Black vices are basically just, you know, my, my extra... Uh, bolt. That's why they're in there. I, I just hope to find one in my opening hand and it's kind of a bolt for free and against some decks even better than that, right? If you can get a lock going, maybe with your Blood Moon, a card that's also in this deck, you can kind of get something going. So, I mean, with this deck, if I'm not playing anything out on turn one, I probably shouldn't have kept a hand. You know, and if I do, then maybe I'm going to keep a bolt in hand to play it on the end step of my opponent, right? On his, on his life total. All the, all the direct damage in here I want to point it to my opponent. I don't want to play it on his creatures. If I'm playing it on his creatures, it probably means that something's going wrong. Although, of course, in this matchup, maybe I have to face some Dark Ritual one-drop creatures that maybe I have to deal with with a Bolt or a Chain Lightning, but it's not really my my preference. Now, uh, the rest of the deck, again, it's all about hurting your opponent. So I've got four Copper Tablets in this deck. So Copper Tablet is an artifact that reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Copper Tablet deals one damage to that player. So if you're already playing a deck that puts your opponent under pressure to life total, right? Then Copper Tablet is really good. Every turn, an extra point of damage guaranteed. Like this, this proves to, this card proves to be much better than like adding extra goblins, for example. Like this really works much better. Uh, talking about goblins, I am of course also playing with four Goblin Kings. Goblin King works really well in this deck together with Blood Moon. Blood Moon is going to make sure that my opponent always has a couple of mountains. 
Goblin King is going to give my goblins mountain walk, so they're unblockable. And remember, Goblin King in these days is also considered a goblin. So if I have two Goblin Kings in play, they give each other plus one, plus one, and mountain walk. So that's pretty sweet. And then, of course, the only creature in this deck that's not a goblin is the Bull Lightning. Now, Bull Lightning, it's an interesting card, and it, it actually had a big impact on the design of this deck. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't play with Mishra's Factory's main is because of Bull Lightning. I want to make sure that I can play this card out at turn number three, right? I want to put full pressure on. And I think that that Bull Lightning, the card doesn't see a lot of play at the moment because, you know, people always like to play Factory. People like to play multiple colors. That makes the, the Bull Lightning more difficult to cast, obviously. Um, and also another problem is Maze of If. Maze of If being unrestricted, more and more people are playing it. Meaning, you know, Bull Lightning is vulnerable to that. If there's one mace, you cannot really play out your Bull Lightning anymore. But the good news is, of course, in this deck, I'm playing with Blood Moon. And Blood Moon is an ideal answer for those uh, mazes of if. So I think Bull Lightning really works in this deck and, uh, and can do a lot of cool stuff. But that's the reason why I'm playing Mishra's Factories on the sideboard. So, for example, if I've used my Bull Lightning, um, you know, in, in game one and it's obvious and my opponent is going to start to sideboard against it, then I'm going to board it out and I'm going to board Mishra's Factory in. Um, you know, some players also play with first strike creatures like Elvish Archers or Black Knight or Stone Throwing Devils, uh, you know, White Knight. If my opponent is playing with any first strike creatures, then I usually also board the Bull Lightning out. So there are some situations where Bull Lightning is not ideal. Uh, but still, I think in this deck, you know, if I can hit my opponent once with the Bull Lightning, it's huge, right? Because my other cards will do the rest. So I just need one hit, and then I'm usually there already. So, yeah, this this deck is very, very explosive. And it's it actually, it's, it's a lot of fun to play. It's not as simple as you think it is. And the reason I say that is that almost against every opponent, even a power deck, you get really like close to killing them, but really close just doesn't cut it, does it? Like you're eventually are gonna lose quite a lot. And then you keep wondering like, what could I have done better? What could I have improved? Um, now there is one card that I haven't mentioned yet that's really cool. There's a one-off in the deck, it's called Eternal Flame. Eternal Flame, two red and two to cast, a card from the dark, uh, a sorcery. And it's, it's really sweet because it says deal an amount of damage to your opponent equal to the amount of basic mountains you control. And obviously I'm playing with 20 basics uh, in this deck, but also take half of the damage yourself. So if I have four mountains, I take two damage myself, but that's, that's not really important with this deck. And I deal four damage to my opponent. And that's of course a big deal. So for four mana, I can deal four damage, which is great. It's a great bang for your buck. And if I, if I find it later in the game, sure, I'm going to deal more damage, hopefully have more mountains. So, I mean, Eternal Flame, I just think it's it's really good. Um, I'm not going to say it's underrated, you know, because I don't think it is. But in this deck, it, it kind of works. Anyway, uh, let's continue uh, with the deck of my opponent, Yella, here in the finals. Let's take a look at Yella's deck and then see what I can expect. And here we see the Mono Black Control deck by Yella. And I think it's just really, really cool. I mean, this is classic, right? I see four Will-O-The-Wisps, and I remember when everybody used to play with the Willow. So Willow is an 0-1 creature, one black to cast, it flies, and for one black you can regenerate it. So it's basically, it can stop everything. And I remember that back in the day, people used to play this with Bad Moon and Unholy Strength, and you would just have this annoying Willow basically around the entire match, dealing damage and blocking huge creatures. Whatever was needed, the Wisp would do. Now, I think in modern old school, um, you know, the, the, the Wisp kind of got obsolete to cards like Maze of If and, of course, just to really good removal, right? People rather splash in a little bit of white for Swords to Plowshares than to play with the Willow. Still, I really love seeing the Willow and, you know, I think it still has potential in the, the current old school meta. So I'm just really happy to see people like Yella playing a full four off in their deck. And just in general, I think this is a really cool take on, on black. You know, with black, you, you often have the tendency to go aggressive. And yes, we do see here Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. That's of course a really good opener all the time, you know, still in, in the current era of, of magic, uh, old school magic. Uh, but we also see classical cards like Royal Assassin, three Royal Assassins. We see the combo between Royal and Icy Manipulator, uh, right? Like Royal is a 1-1 creature. You can tap it to destroy target tap creature. And with Icy Manipulator, you can, of course, tap a creature down. So if you have both of these cards, you have your combo, uh, you know, on the battlefield, which is quite nice. Then we also see Demonic Hordes, which is a 5-5 creature, and you can tap it to destroy target land. Now, 
The problem with this creature is that it's quite expensive to cast and you have to pay an upkeep cost of three black. If you cannot pay the upkeep cost, the horde taps itself and uh, you have to destroy a land of your own and your opponent can actually choose what land is getting destroyed. Now the cool thing is with the current modern rules of magic that are applied in these games, what you can do is during your upkeep when the demonic horde taps itself in response to that you can tap the hordes quickly so that you can also destroy a land on the side of your opponent. So yes, you're gonna lose a land on your side which is bad and your demonic hordes is tapped which is also bad but at least you get value out of it and you can still destroy a land at the side of your opponent. So the card became a little bit better than what it was, you know, at least I think. Now, uh, besides these creatures, we also see a land destruction theme in the deck. We see blights and we see sinkholes. So those are, of course, four great land or eight in total land destruction spells here in the deck of Yella. And that land destruction strategy works together really well with Paralyze. Paralyze being this enchant creature that you can put on target creature of your opponent. The creature becomes tapped and then your opponent has to be four during the upkeep to untap the creature. Now, of course, when you play with Blight and Sinkhole, your opponent probably will not have a lot of uh, mana to untap. So it's going to be really difficult to untap the creature after it's been paralyzed. And of course, Paralyzed and Icy Manipulator is another nice little combo that we see here uh, in this deck. Now, there's one other card that I have to discuss here. It's just a one-off in the deck of Yellow, but I love it. It's Xenic Poltergeist. So Xenic Poltergeist is two black and one to cast for this one one. It's actually a spirit now um, and you can tap it and until your next uh, upkeep, until your next upkeep, which is quite long, target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its mana value. So Xenic Poltergeist is also known as the Mox Killer. Like it's quite cool, right? You can use this on a Mox, it becomes a zero zero, it dies. And the nice thing about the Xenic Poltergeist is it's also a nice way to kind of try to t uh, deal with artifacts of your opponent, right? They get really vulnerable once they're turned into creatures. And remember, you're playing mono black, so you don't have Disenchant, you don't have Shatter, you don't have Crumble. It's really tough to deal with artifacts, right? That's why a lot of these decks usually play a Neverneural Disc to kind of deal with enchantments and artifacts. At least with the Xenic Poltergeist, you have some kind of way to, uh, to deal with artifacts or at least interact with them. And I think it's pretty sweet that Yella is playing that one-off in the deck. And uh, I'm curious, I'm curious to see how it'll how it will perform. Okay, we have looked at the deck of Yella. We've looked at my deck and that only means one thing, right? We are ready for the finals. I mean, let's do this, let's go. Game number one is about to start here of the finals of the Zombie Cup 2 and it's a little bit confusing because on the left we have Yella with Mono Black and on the right it's me so I'm not on the Timmy playmat, I'm on the other playmat and I'm playing with my Mono Red Goblin Bowl deck. So uh, lots of goblins and bowl lightnings and lightning bolts and chain lightnings. And uh, throwing a five here so we're kind of throwing the dice to see who gets to start. Five being pretty high, he throws a one, so I guess I'm gonna start here. So that's a good sign for me, you know, I've got a quick aggressive deck, I really wanna start. Hopefully I can find a vice and deal some early damage, that would be uh, really ideal. Playing four main, so starting here with a mountain. Oh, first we have the hands. Okay, ooh, there was a mind twist in there. So that's pretty good. I'm actually not showing my hand. I guess uh, I got to start here with... Oh, look at this Black Lotus sacking the Lotus. Wow, what an opening here. So look at that. My hand actually wasn't really good. And he's losing his Mind Twist. I'm really happy with this Wheel of Fortune. Mind Twist being one of those cards that can uh, really wreck me. Oh, look what he does here. I think he wants to shuffle them back in. It's not a... Time Twister, of course. It is a Wheel of Fortune, so now he has to take them out of his deck again. <laughs> oh, man. It can happen. I guess he's been more like Time Twisted than uh, than Wheel of Fortune today. Luckily enough, he does uh, remember the card still, so he's going to take him out of his deck. And I guess the one relevant card here in the hand was the Mind Twist. So you're just really happy to see that Mind Twist kind of go. So he's taking them uh, out of his deck. So I mean that Mind Twist together with Dark Ritual was quite good, right? He had quite an interesting option here. He could go for, you know, Dark Ritual into Mind Twist for two. Or he could say, I'm just going to drop Swamp past turn, second Swamp, 
try to play a sinkhole on a mountain. I think because you're playing against goblins, I would have considered going for the uh, Dark Ritual Mind Twist play. You know, which in a way seems kind of odd because you lose two cards to take two cards out of the hand, but it's because you're playing against goblins. So that's kind of... Uh, Kind of a positive thing. Anyway, we're kind of figuring out the hand here, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit uh, until we uh, we start here at the first turn of Yella. Okay, and we're all sorted out again. And of course, I meant until uh, Yella is his new hand because it's still my turn. Of course, I cracked the Lotus for Wheel of Fortune, and now I've got a new hand. And I found the Goblins of the Flark, so I'm playing that out. This is still my first turn, and now I'm passing the turn here to Yella. So this is a pretty good opener for me here. Basically, got a mountain for free. Ooh, there's that Paralyze. So Yella kind of slamming that on. So Paralyze, again, it's really doing work here. Now my second mountain passing the turn. Turn two for me is kind of, well, not awkward. I have a few things I can do. Oh, there we see uh, a Blight. So if I tap the mountain, I'm going to lose it. Tapping three. So the mountain is destroyed. Are we going to see a Bull Lightning here? There's the Bull Lightning. Yeah, this is ideal. This is what I want to do in life. So dealing 6 points of damage, putting him on 14. Passing the turn. Finding 3. And there we see Hypnotic Spectre. That is not great. Do I have a Lightning Bolt or a Chain Lightning? Or another Bull Lightning? Ooh, I've got a Goblin King. Playing a Goblin King, passing the turn. So that means he can now attack my hand. There he goes. Into the red zone, gonna take two damage. Gonna lose a mountain. There's another Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, so my hand is kind of toast. There's another mountain. What do I have? Tapping three, another Goblin King. Okay, that's really nice because now they pump each other. So they're three, three each. Attacking here. How many cards do I have still? Only two. Well, they're both going to go, probably, unless one of those cards is a Lightning Bolt. And I could Bolt probably to the face. Going to attack here with both. So I'm going to take four more damage, four more points of damage. So I'm on 14. And there, a Copper Tablet and a Mountain gone. Ooh, this is really good, finding a Royal Assassin. Yeah, deciding to untap the Goblins of the Flark. Remember, the Goblins of the Flark is now a 3-3 creature. Now, this is kind of hard, right? I can attack with both. And if he doesn't block, he takes six damage. Which is not too shabby. But then, of course, I am probably going to lose a Goblin King to the Royal Assassin next turn. But it is very tempting, though. I mean, my deck is all about dealing damage. Look at that. Oh, I can, of course, also attack with the Goblins of the Flark. Nine damage coming in. Wow. So he's going to go from 11 to 2. Yeah, then it's definitely worth the attack. I kind of forgot that, of course, I can also attack with the Goblins of the Flark. So all I need now from the top is just some direct damage, and it should be possible. I haven't played out a single Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning. Here we see a Drain Life. Okay, that's a little bit unfortunate, because now he's going to go up to five. There's the attack. Losing uh, a Black Vice. Yeah, Black Vice is not ideal against these quick Black decks. Again here, untapping the Goblins of the Flark. He didn't kill anything, by the way, with the Royal. Exactly. He's now going to kill. And I'm just passing the... Oh, I'm attacking him. Okay, and then he's going to kill in response. So he just took one damage. He's now on four. Yeah, this is kind of risky. Because now he can kill my Goblins of the Flark. I'm on ten. He's going to drop me to six. I'm going to lose that card in hand. Oh, man, I'm not liking this. I mean, there's a part of me that thinks I shouldn't have untapped that Goblins of the Flark, you know, that then he would still be on five, yes, but the card in hand it could have played out. Let's see what card I'm going to lose. Another Goblins of the Flark. Yeah, I think it would have been better to not to untap that Goblin. So keeping a tap now. Just really looking for direct damage here. Three. Oh, there's a Bull Lightning, but of course he can take it out. Oh, man. That wasn't smart. Maybe I thought I won already. <laughs> oh, there's a Drain Life, and he's going to take it here. Yeah, he can play a Drain Life big enough here.
to take it from me. I was so close. And this is what I meant in the deck deck. You know, when I talked about this deck, you get so close so often and you start thinking, what if I made some other, you know, other choices along the way? I think what I really missed in this game, because I had a great start with that uh, Black Lotus into the wheel. I think what I really missed here were the chain lightnings and the lightning bolts. I've seen absolutely zero of those. And I'm probably going to board out the uh, the Black Vices, despite the fact that I'm again on the play. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll just... Uh, Give, uh, give us some time here to sideboard and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So have to win this one to stay in the finals, to try to win the tournament here. Taking a mulligan, going down to six. That is not great. Changing my mind, okay. Putting a card here, another card on the bottom. I mean, it's got to be a mountain, right? Knowing my deck. Anyway, okay, there's a start with the Black Vice. So I guess I kept the Vice. Again, a Black Lotus in my opener. Wow. That is kind of ridiculous. So I had a Black Lotus in game one. I'm having a Black Lotus in game two. That is ridiculous luck. This is a really great opener for me, you know, because it means more damage. And it looks like Yellow also took a Mulligan here because he only takes two damage, go to 12. But he took six, of course, from the Bull Lightning, then two from the Vice. And here we see a Willow the Wisp. And playing a Goblin Balloon Brigade and a pass. Only two cards in hand. I mean, it's nice to have a Black Lotus, but obviously the downside is that it does take a card away from your hand. So I've got an explosive start, but, you know, we saw. Oh, he's taking more damage here from the Vice. I'm not sure if he should take two points, actually. Shouldn't he just take one? Anyway, it looks like he's taking two, going down to 10. Passing the turn. So playing out that Mishra's Factory passing. So that's kind of good news for me, I guess. Playing a Goblin Balloon Brigade. Uh, sorry, a Goblin to the Flark. Passing the turn. One more damage here for Yelly. He's going to go to nine. So the Vice is doing some work. But what I wanted to say is it's nice to have such an explosive start. But as we could see in game one, it's not a guarantee. Uh, this deck is really good at explosive starts and dealing a lot of damage early, but then it kind of runs out of steam and you end up losing. So I'm, I'm not really happy with the situation here. There's a second Swamp. I mean, if we see, for example, if not Expector now, that would be kind of terrifying. But also Royal Assassin is really bad news. There are just a lot of cards that are quite good against my Goblins here. And of course, the Paralyzes. Again, they had their value, right, in, the, in, the, in that first game. And I think they've been doing really well for Yellow the whole day. There's the Paralyzed again. I knew it. <laughs> the moment he taps that one black. And now it's going to go into the red zone. I'm actually kind of happy that he does this. Because it gives me an opening to attack with Goblin's, uh, Goblin Balloon Brigade. Because he can no longer uh, regenerate the Willow. So it's kind of a free point of damage. A uh, one point uh, of damage for me for free. And this may sound like it doesn't really matter. But every single point matters. In my Goblin deck, I know that I've been playing it all day. Three cards just passing the turn. My tournament life here on a very thin line. I, am I going to lose the finals here? There's an Hypnotic Specter. More bad news for me. At least he's not attacking, although that doesn't really matter that much. Okay, there we see a Chain Lightning. I mean, this is nice, but I really want to play the Chain Lightning on Yellow's life total. want to put him to five. But I'm deciding not to want to protect my hand. Tapping three. Another Hypnotic Spectre. Oh, that's unfortunate. There's the Willow. So the Willows don't really bother me that much. There's a Mountain. Tapping two. What do I have? Copper Tablet. Okay, this Copper Tablet could kind of work because he's quite low so he's going to go to seven but i am going to lose a card now due to the hypnotic specter i mean such a good card hypnotic specter it's really hard for me to fight against it despite the fact that i'm playing with four bolts and four chains attacking here with both and the factory and the hippie gonna drop to 14 gonna lose a card oh man that is unfortunate wheel of fortune and a blight here Oh man, this is, I can feel it in my stomach here. This is painful. Second game. Remember, I have to win this. 
I wonder if I have a ball lightning. I do have a ball lightning. This is quite good. I think this ball lightning is going to grant me the victory. I mean, he could even consider double blocking it here. It looks like I also want to attack. Yeah, also attacking with the goblins of the flark. So that means he's going to take six points of damage. Wow. This ball lightning makes all the difference here because now he's going to take a damage from the copper tablet. This is going to go to one. He needs to kill me now. I'm on 13. Yep, that's it. Okay, winning game number two. Remember, it's just game number two. I mean, he's shaking my hand, but it's just game number two. We have a third game to go. I mean, this was close. This was really close. I really needed that ball lightning, you know, to, to, to make it work. So I'm not there yet. I mean, Jealous Deck is dangerous and he's a good player. So we're going to shuffle up again and we will catch back up with you in the deciding game number three. Game number three is about to begin. Oh, man. <laughs> you can see us uh, shaking each other's hands there before the start. Game number three, wishing each other the best of luck. But, of course, we both want to win. So it looks like uh, I'm keeping the hand of my opponent here. Yellow is taking the mulligan. He's on the playoff course after losing that second game. And I kind of feel lucky there in that second game that I, that I got to win it. Here's my hand. Okay, two bolts. I'm happy with that. A firebolt. Turn one play with the Goblin Balloon Brigade. And also look at that Mishra's factory. So I boarded those factories in and what I boarded out are the Bull Lightnings. Probably because I'm expecting Yelly here to board in his Black Knights. Two, two first strikers. It is of course a little bit risky because the Bull Lightning is what gave me the victory in game number two. But I mean, the Bow Lightning against the Black Knights, but also against the Royal Assassins are just not that great. So let's see what uh, Yella here is going to do. Is he going to keep his hand? He's going to take another mulligan. Wow, so he's going to take a double mulligan here in the finals, the deciding game. That is bad luck here for, uh, for Yella. But I have to admit, because of course I remember this very well, I was happy when this happened. I was like, okay. Like normally, I'm not for non-games, but when I'm in the final of a tournament, even if it's just with eight people, I want to win, you know? <laughs> like, it is as simple as that. So, um, he's starting now with seven, of course, London Mulligan rule, but he has to put two on the bottom if he decides to keep. And I guess he, he is like, are you going to go to four? That would be insane. Remember, he's on the play. He's not even on the draw. So he's putting one card on the bottom. I think he's got to put this exactly. There's the second. So starting with just five cards in hand. I'm really happy that I boarded out devices. We see a swamp in hand. Another swamp here on the table and a pass. There's a mountain. I'm expecting the Goblin Balloon Brigade to be played out now. Hopefully I've taken out my uh, Black Vices. I usually do when I'm on the draw and also against fast decks like the deck of Yella. Tapping two. Okay, there's a Blight. So the Blight is annoying, but it's not the end of the world. I don't need that much mana. But remember, my opening hand had just one mountain and exactly that factory, so that's not ideal. Attacking him for one here. Tapping two. Are we going to see... There's a Copper Tablet. Okay, so I'm kind of taking a risk here, losing the mountain, but with my deck, I have to play aggressive. So that means now that we both take a damage every upkeep, so it's going to be interesting to see if we miss any triggers. Yellow here dropping to 18. There's a Black Knight, so there's again that Knight that works so well, and I'm going to go to 19. Look at that, almost missing the trigger. The tip I have for myself and everybody else who plays with this card, put, your, put one of your dice on top of your library, so you don't forget. Anyway, there's a Mountain. This is actually quite good, because now I can fly over the Black Knight to deal the damage. Or, of course, play out another Goblin. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. Okay, playing a Lightning Bolt and attacking for one, putting him here on 17. Passing the turn, he's going to go to 16 because of the uh, Copper Tablet. And I think one of the reasons for me to do this is because it allows me to attack with the Goblin Balloon Brigade. And of course, next turn I can attack with the Factory. Going to take a damage here, drop to 18. It's nice when you play Mono Black, you don't have to worry that much about him destroying the Factory. Because of course with Black it's hard to have an answer to an artifact creature. Of course, he does have enough land removal in the deck, so he's going to take more damage, going to drop to 14. 
There's another Goblins of the Flark. So I'm liking the direction that this game is going. And the Copper Tablet is doing work here, reminding Yella that he has to take his damage. Going to go to 13. He's putting a dice now on his deck so that he doesn't forget. I should do the same, actually. There's a Mishra's Factory. Going to take a damage. Now remember, I believe I still have a Lightning Bolt in hand, so I could animate my factory, attack here with both, and if he animates, I can bolt it. So let's see if he's going to do that. Attacking for three. He's animating, and now I'm going to respond with a bolt, so before blockers are declared. And now let's see what he can do. I think, yeah, exactly, I think there's nothing he can do. Taking three more points of damage, going to go down to ten. There's a pass, going to go down to nine. Ooh, I'm getting so close. He's got to untap that swamp. Exactly. Going to tap it. There's a Paralyze. It's like dropping them off <laughs> there. Like, here, take it, take it. And now I'm really happy with my factory because he cannot Paralyze that, of course. Oh, man. This is Nerf Wrecking. He's on nine. I can animate, put him on seven. That's exactly what I do here. I mean, just can, if, if you got an attack, I have to do it right, passing the turn. He is going to drop to six here. There you go. And he's playing the Black Knight. Going to drop here to 15. Ah, the Black Knight is good again because it can block my, uh, my factory. Going to tap three. Are we going to see a Goblin King? We're going to see an Earthquake for two. Oh, wow. That's actually quite good because it deals two damage to him as well. And it takes care of the Black Knight. Yeah, I think this 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 Earthquake is a big deal. Because now he's on three. I can attack and put him on one. Yeah, this is a big deal. Am I going to win it here? And he's saying, you got this. But, you know, I want to obviously... Finish it. Gonna draw a card. I dropped to 12, by the way. Shouldn't forget my own trigger. Gonna put him on one. And then that's the end of the road. Yep. There was very little that he could do here. Also, of course, a terror couldn't work. He really needed a sinkhole or a blight. But yeah. Waiting it here. Oh, and look at this. I kept the bull lightnings in my deck. Didn't take them out. So I guess I just took the four black vices out and put the four Mishra's factories in. And I kept the bull lightnings in just because they can still be so good if you time them right. Or maybe I took, I can't remember, maybe I took one or two out, kept playing with two in the in the deck. But hey, I won, man. I'm super happy. Um, great. Thank you, uh, Derek. Here you can see Derek here is uh, giving me here the, the card, the, uh, the escape zombies. So I've got it now and uh, I'm looking forward to come back next year and uh, play with this card in my deck. And then I can already tell you that I'm going to make a proper zombie deck. I can, uh, I can promise you that where the escape zombie will have... A nice little place in uh, in it so wow man amazing 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 and here we see uh, my deck so this is the winning deck I guess of the zombie cup number two I would like to thank you for uh, for watching if you missed any episodes of the tournament make sure to check out the playlist that's popping up right now the info card so click on there it'll take you to the playlist and before you go please take a moment to like share and comment all these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, wow. I'm just, woo! It's really nice for me to uh, to look back at this uh, at this match. It's been a while ago. Of course, I remember that I, that I won it, but uh, yeah, it's a good feeling. Um, one last thing before I forget. Of course, I have a Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash TimmyTalks. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a sponsor of the show. It already starts for just $1 a month and it really, really helps to keep the channel going. So please consider becoming a patron. And of course, a super big thank you to the patrons that I already have. All those patrons, by the way, are listed in the fantastic, amazing end scroll that you can find at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.
Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.